I went to a Jesuit university for graduate school. I only had a couple of professors who were Jesuits, but I was always impressed by how much they knew about every topic that would come up in class. It seems that if you take it as your God-given mission in life to be a scholar, you have a pretty compelling reason to study. And all the Jesuits I met had dedicated their lives to learning. Now there's a Jesuit pope. Given my past interactions with Jesuits, I had assumed that if Pope Francis were to speak about some topic, his words would be the result of careful study. Wrong. I thought that since Pope Francis had spent his life studying religion, his comments about Islam would at least be more accurate than the patronizing nonsense we get from President Obama, Prime Minister Cameron, CNN, ABC, The New York Times, and so on. Wrong. Let's look at the Pope's remarks about Islam and violence. He said, I don't like to speak of Islamic violence because every day when I browse the newspapers, I see violence here in Italy. This one who has murdered his girlfriend, another who has murdered the mother-in-law. And these are baptized Catholics. There are violent Catholics. If I speak of Islamic violence, I must speak of Catholic violence. And no, not all Muslims are violent. Not all Catholics are violent. It is like a fruit salad. There's everything. There are violent persons of this religion. This is true. I believe that in pretty much every religion, there is always a small group of fundamentalists. Fundamentalists, we have them. When fundamentalism comes to kill, it can kill with the language. The Apostle James says this, not me. And even with a knife, no. I do not believe it is right to identify Islam with violence. This is not right or true. So, all religions have their radicals. You don't condemn Catholicism when a baptized Catholic kills his girlfriend or mother-in-law. Why would you condemn Islam when a jihadi kills unbelievers in the name of Allah? Pretty much the same response we've gotten from just about every politician and reporter since 9-11. This one's a little scarier because while we've come to expect utter nonsense from politicians and reporters, many people trust the Pope. So, is the Pope right? Not remotely. But fortunately for you Catholics out there, papal infallibility only applies to certain kinds of statements the Pope makes, and this isn't one of them. As a Catholic, you do not have to agree with the Pope when he says something that is completely ridiculous. Why is the Pope wrong? Well, is a baptized Catholic commanded in Scripture to kill his girlfriend or his mother-in-law? No. So, is a man killing his girlfriend or mother-in-law the result of his Catholic faith? No. Killing his wife or mother-in-law is a clear violation of his Catholic faith. In other words, a man has his Catholic faith, but he may also be a violent person. Those two features are unrelated. When he gets angry and kills, he's acting in spite of his Catholic faith, not because of it. Now, when Muslims wage jihad, are they violating their Islamic faith? Well, they could be. There are limits on what Muslims are allowed to do in various circumstances. But is fighting unbelievers in the name of Allah something a jihadi just happens to do and is completely unconnected to his Islamic faith? Or is it something that flows from Islam itself? What does the Quran say? Fight those who do not believe in Allah. Surah 9, verse 29. O prophets, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites and be unyielding to them. Surah 9, verse 73. Surely Allah has bought of the believers their persons and their property for this, that they shall have the garden. They fight in Allah's way, so they slay and are slain. Surah 9, verse 111. O you who believe, fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you and let them find in you hardness. Surah 9, Verse 123, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those who are with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful among themselves. Surah 48, verse 29. What does Muhammad say? In Sahih Muslim 129, Muhammad declares, I have been commanded to fight people until they bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. What tactic brought Muhammad victory? In Sahih al-Bukhari 2977, he proclaims, I have been made victorious with terror. Now the standard objections. But David, there are peaceful teachings in Islam as well. Here's a video where I show how the peaceful and violent commands fit together. The peaceful commands are abrogated or canceled by the commands to violently subjugate unbelievers. Click and watch to learn more. But David, you're taking those passages out of context. No, I'm not. 
Here's a video where I go through the historical and literary contexts of Fight Those Who Do Not Believe in Allah to show that it means exactly what it says. But David, there are plenty of peaceful Muslims in the world. True, but Islam isn't defined by peaceful Muslims or by violent Muslims. Islam is defined by the Quran and Muhammad. Click on this video if you'd like to understand why there are so many peaceful Muslims, even though Islam calls for the violent subjugation of non-Muslims. But David, if a Muslim scholar were here, he could refute what you're saying. No, he couldn't. He'd try, but he would fail. Here's a video where I discuss jihad with the best Muslim debater in the world. Watch it and tell me I'm getting any of this wrong. Putting all of this together, is a baptized Catholic killing his girlfriend or mother-in-law in clear violation of his Catholic faith the same thing as a Muslim waging jihad because he's been commanded by Allah and Muhammad to do so? Short answer, no. Long answer, no. Now there's certainly much more the Pope could learn about Islam, but given the level of ignorance among world leaders, I'd be thrilled if he simply learned why his response to Islamic terror is thoroughly nonsensical, not to mention dangerous, since people are being slaughtered while our leaders protect the ideology that calls for the slaughter.